and welcome. Again, I'm so pleased to have you here today. Um, my name is Deborah Burton, and it is my pleasure to welcome you uh, to our global launch webinar for the Lean IT Association and for our first executive series webinar. So I will be your host and moderator for today. And before we get started, I just wanted to take a moment to uh, introduce uh, LITA for all of you. I'm sure you are aware of it. Um, the Lean IT Association is made up of uh, six member organizations. Um, that is uh, Pink Elephant, Exxon, ITpreneurs, PeopleCert, Quint Wellington and Redwood, and APMG. And uh, the reason that these organizations came together was to really create an industry standard set of lean IT reference materials for uh, the lean audience. And the reason that we believe in lean and what we believe lean will bring to organizations is that, you know, today organizations need to be in control and to, they need to opti optimize their daily business, but they also need to innovate their business models and technologies. And lean IT offers a strong, well-founded solution for both of these types of challenges. You know, Lean revolves around principles for operational excellence, for customer centricity, for strategy development, for management of change and transition, for teams and individual behavior and their motivation. It's about the value that Lean will bring to organizations. Now these executive webinar sessions that we've created, we've built them to help you, um, what we see as part of our global community, to actually um, join us and have the information that you need to go out into the market to promote the Lean Principles. Um, it is my pleasure and I am absolutely pleased to be joined today by Troy Dumoulin from Pink Elephant. Hello, Troy. How are you today? Good morning and good afternoon, Deborah. I'm great and glad to be here. Well, we're very pleased to have you as well. I am, uh, what, before we get started and before I actually turn the presentation over to you, Troy, I would like to launch another poll. Uh, and what I'd like the audience to, to tell and provide for us is a, a little bit of information about yourself. So I'm going to launch the poll now. And what I'm interested in knowing is um, what is your experience with Lean IT? Uh, are you a Lean IT expert? Are you an ITIL expert? Do you have experience with both ITIL and Lean IT? Uh, I know a bit about Lean IT, but I want to know more. I have no experience with Lean or ITSM. Okay, the poll is in. I'm just going to give it just a couple more seconds as votes are still coming in. Okay, so let me close the poll. And let me share the results. So, uh, Troy, as you can see, um, we don't have any Lean IT experts joining us today, but we have a number of ITIL experts, 27%. We have uh, folks that have experience in both ITIL and Lean IT, 30%. 38% of our attendees today, they know a bit about Lean IT, but want to know more. And the last 5% really don't have much experience with Lean or ITSM. So let me uh, uh, close the poll and go back to our presentation. One moment. So before I turn it over to Troy, I'd just like to uh, take a minute to uh, introduce Troy to the audience. I just have a, a short intro here, Troy, before I turn the reins over to you for the presentation. 
Um, for those of you that don't know Troy, uh, Troy is the Vice President of Research, Innovation, and Product Development at Pink Elephant. And Troy is a leading ITIL and IT governance authority with a solid and very, very rich background in executive IT management consulting. Troy holds the ITIL Service Manager and expert certifications and has extensive experience in leading IT service management programs with a regional and global scope. Troy is a frequent speaker at IT management events and is a contributing author to multiple ITSM and Lean IT books, papers, and official ITIL publications, including ITIL's planning to implement IT service management and continual service improvement. Today, he's going to spend some time with us in this executive webinar series to talk about combining lean IT and IT service management to enable grassroots continual service improvement. So with that, uh, Troy, I will turn the presentation over to you. Thank you, Deborah. Well, the poll was interesting in the sense that uh, it's not surprising. Lean in its application to the IT industry is actually relatively new, where Lean has been around for decades, and one could argue, you know, early 1900s, going back far enough. The application of Lean principles to IT value streams and IT management is recent in our history, and my own journey began about four to five years ago. Uh, and it's really changed the way I look at things. In fact, I kind of tweeted out before the session today that Lean IT has basically changed the way I look at any process. And of course, you know, being a service management person myself, process has always been a major part of how I look at the world. And that's, you know, an important thing because understanding The best way, or a good way, if you want to put it in that context, to do any given activity is always important. We want to be doing things at least equally, if not even a bit more so, on flow. Because if you consider, everything in life is the product of a process. I know that sounds a little bit <laughs> kind of you know theoretical, but if you consider everything we do uh, is based on we have a goal. The end end point of that goal. So whether that goal is getting sleepy kids out of bed and getting them to a school where I need to get my children, whether that's a software development type of problem, whether that's a project management activity or an IT management process around resolving service disruptions or authorizing change, everything is relative to that flow, this value stream. But the, is that the goal is not achieved until the process is complete. So the speed at which things happen is a huge indicator in the value concept of how we actually achieve those goals. So flow will be a big part of what we talk about today. And I look through the idea of flow now as a major principle. So it's, it's not just important to look at what should happen, but what would the speed of that thing be? And what should it be relative to achieving a goal? That's our first point we're going to cover in today's agenda. Now, our problem is not so much that we don't have an eye on the process and the value stream. We can if we sit down enough you know, and think about what the value streams of IT are, uh, there's various frameworks uh, that will help us with that. The challenge with that is that a flow relative to a system of value creation, a value system, is largely going to be made up of many different stakeholders. And basically, in system dynamics, we call these agents of the system. And there are people and or stakeholders that are involved in the complete system challenge with that is that their view of what system they're part of will greatly impact how flow happens. And this is where we get to culture on flow. And then we'll move to the concept of standard work in Kaizen. And then finally, we'll focus on working smarter, not harder. And this is where the classic waste reduction component of lean comes in. But before I move on to the waste premise, I want to just focus on lean itself. So one of the interesting things about lean is it's often considered um, and maybe even accused of focusing only on waste reduction. Now, waste reduction is a major part of doing the right thing, things faster in a speed context and a flow. But I like to think about lean 
more as a methodology for continual improvement. You know, ITIL and other frameworks all talk about customer value and improving things over time, and there's great guidance in those frameworks around that, but we're leaning focuses in on is specific tools and methods for achieving that. Now, one way to look at lean is not so much, okay, focus on waste, but it's this premise of the leadership of this organization, the stakeholders of this value stream, the person who has some emotional attachment to this thing you are looking at improving, regardless of what it is, have defined what a future state looks like, a vision of a true north, if you will. And in Lean, we call that standard work, what should be. And once we've defined this what should be, you know, this is where are, where do we want to be versus where are we now, we now can understand what's the gap between this future or target state and our current state. And Lean is about taking that gap and closing it incrementally and continuously towards that objective. This is where Lean is more about a continual improvement method than simply waste. Now we can do that in many ways. We can look at that relative to culture, to safety, to productivity, to morale. We have a problem based on a future state that's been defined. How do I move this organization, this value stream towards that goal? And this is the premise of Lean that I'd like to focus on today. So let's consider, first of all, a couple of key premises here. So as in many other frameworks, it's all about value. Value from the perspective of Lean starts with the eye of the service consumer, the voice of customer. And value has to be looked at from multiple different perspectives. There's the concept of quality. You know, has that voice of customer requirement around critical to quality, the must-haves, the, the nice-to-haves, has that been defined and are we delivering on benefits? Delivery is a, is a big component of this as well, because if I deliver the benefit, but it's a day late, then the quality experience, the customer experience, is going to be in jeopardy here. So this is where Lean focuses just in time, where the delivery of the value must meet the goal to actually be successful. And of course, cost. This is a reduction of, uh, of resources which are not being used efficiently, the reduction of waste. But you can also add risk, because risk has cost. All of these red premises basically come into being around the voice of customer conversation. Now, to do that, one of the things that we focus on is not just the waste, but management as a facilitator. There's a premise called Jadoka on the right-hand side of this house of lean. And Jadoka, that was a term coined by the Toyota production system, is focused on quality at the source, the empowerment of the individual to say, there is something in front of me that I know if I pass down the line in this value stream, it's going to basically cause havoc if I let it go. And so the premise of stopping the line, pulling the end on cord, this is a key component. Instilling a culture of quality where you do it right the first time. I'll take an example in the IT world where we know that most projects, most development activities will knowingly move known defects into production because we, we don't eliminate risk, we mitigate risk, we optimize risk. The challenge with that is whether, first of all, we accept that we should move it down the line, there's a premise of fixing it at source, but at least if we are going to move it down the line, the knowledge of that you known defect would be important to pass on as well. So this premise of creating quality at the source where management works as a facilitator to enable grassroots quality that's done by the individuals who are doing the work themselves. And when we talk about Kaizen, we'll talk about the fact that one of the most important things around a Kaizen improvement effort is to involve the individuals who actually live and breathe the value stream every day because it's at that point where the knowledge of possible improvements is best understood. This is where we employ all of the employees in the activity involved in this conversation. So these are general lean principles. And of course, you may be wondering, how do we apply these to IT? Well, we're going to get to that in the next part of our session. So as we mentioned earlier, lean has been around for a long time. It's used, though, in other major verticals, has it been evolving? So initially starting in the manufacturing space and supply chain, you've seen lean now 
being introduced into higher education, into the healthcare, and now into professional services. And this is where the application of lean has been a more recent occurrence in the last maybe five to seven years. And this is a de definition that the Lean IT Association has come up with, which simply says that Lean IT is the extension of all these principles of flow, of value creation, of waste reduction, not only focusing on what the right thing to do is, but at the right level and at the right speed, focusing now this concept of flow into the IT space and the professionalization of our industry relative to these principles and models. So how would we apply lean in the IT environment, the IT vertical? One of the ways I like to think about this is the conversation of what I like to call the three core architectures of a service management organization. Now, this is a high level picture and there are other architectures like data, et cetera, that you can describe and discuss, but let's focus on this for the moment. First of all, the concept of governance versus management. To govern something is not the concept of compliance and or audit. So take those words and put them to the side. To govern something is to say, I have a future state view of what my target state, my true north should be. And then I would direct my management team through prioritization to basically take our current state to that target state in the future. So to govern is to say, here's where I want to go, and to manage is to take us there. So we know what it is in a technical organization to govern and manage a technology architecture. And by architecture, simply, I mean a system that has interconnections, that there are many agents, and that is uh, complex, and that needs to be understood from a cause and effect perspective. So we have this view of our current technology architecture. And today, most organizations would have a target state in mind and want to move legacy to that point. So we govern the technology architecture. And you can apply lean to technology, because if you have redundant technologies uh, that are not necessary, we can eliminate waste and redundancy and improve velocity. But that technical architecture only exists to deliver a service architecture. So one of the interesting things that we talk about when we first define or discover services is that most organizations are going to discover they have multiple redundant services based on this more of a custom uh, versus standard offering model. And so you can apply uh, lean from the premise of optimization and standardization of services as well. The third component, though, is the process architecture premise. Now, even if you had never heard of the premise of ITIL or TOGAF from an architecture perspective or an SDLC methodology like Waterfall or Agile or PMI from a project management perspective, every organization who is a service organization has the basic value stream of a service provider. That is, you have practices today for talking to the service consumer, a.k.a. your customer. Those conversations result in requirements generation. Those requirements generation dialogues come into design blueprints. Those design blueprints are handed to someone who builds or develops this activity through project or uh, more business as usual type process. After that, that validation activity begins, you move that to production and then you get the honor of supporting it. So the interesting thing here is this value stream of plan, build, run or service strategy, design, transition, operation, whether you ever heard the word ITIL or any other framework, it exists in all cases. Now the question here that we're going to discuss is do we govern the value stream, this overall enterprise architecture of process throughput? And so that means we have a future state and we have a current state and we close the gap, right? That's that problem um, perspective. The, the problem identification and closing the gaps towards the future state goal. So when we think about lean, we can use lean in all three areas, but the leadership of the organization has to move this organization to a point that they actually value and understand that they have three core architectures, not just one. I'm often asked, what is the difference between a service organization versus a technology focused organization? I use this picture in that dialogue. You see, a technical organization has all three. 
because while the other two may not be governed and managed, they still exist. A service organization recognizes it has all three and do its and does its best basically to close the gap in all three areas. Without that premise, you are largely leaving two thirds of your value capability ungoverned, unmanaged. So this is where we're going to focus now the lean premise. We're going to focus on the process architecture, though it can be used in all three. So consider a value system. Okay, Each of us who work in the IT industry exists somewhere in this value system. We have customer engagement processes. We have plan build processes. And then, of course, we get this privilege of running. Now, the challenge with this is while it's a horizontal value system and work flows through that value system, we typically focus our optimizations and our improvement on the vertical structures, the silos, if you will. And one of the challenges uh, that we face is that this value system is not so much challenged within the vertical activity of customer engagement or plan build, but it's in the handoffs of the system. Now, remember what I talked to you about earlier around flow. This process will not generate value until the object called the work in progress gets all the way to the end. And the faster or the slower that that occurs will greatly impact the use and or consumption of this thing that we're developing and or building and or uh, serving. The challenge today is that we do not focus on value stream thinking. We don't have a governance, first of all, at the top of this model that looks at the entire value system. We govern each silo. In fact, if you think about it, how many organizations truly have enterprise IT governance? They have operation governance. Uh, they'll have development slash plan build governance times X, and they'll have other goals and objectives for customer engagement. We have very fractured views of what the priorities are within this value system. This is going to be a challenge in our next slide as we talk about the difference between agility and velocity, but for the moment, would you accept that flow across this factory is something that we need to pay attention to? There's a principle called the theory of constraints. Now, the theory of constraints says that no system for generating value, and this is what this is, will operate any faster than its limiting bottleneck and or constraint. So if you will, demand comes in the front of the customer engagement, and it might come in very quickly, and it might get hung up in plan build. Right? or make it hung up in the move to production. The reality is without understanding the total system, we can't identify where the bottlenecks are, and this is a key aspect of improving flow. This is where continual improvement at the bottom can't, op can't only optimize activities, because in the premise of a value system, if I optimize a non-constraint, if I make a non-bottleneck faster, that doesn't mean that I will get any faster flow in the end-to-end -end concept here. So this premise of value stream and flow modeling and analysis is key. Now, one of the challenges that we get to when we even focus on best practice is that we'll have various groups you know, focusing on improving, let's say, change management over here, uh, an application development method over here, a project or architecture activity over here. The problem with that is that if we don't look at this as a concerted system, we can be creating new process silos. In fact, we could even damage the existing flow by creating more variability, more redundancy. We'll come back to that as well. So let's unpack this concept of velocity. I've used this term a couple of times. So this is general system dynamics. Velocity, by definition, equals speed with direction. Agility, which is a term that's very common that you'll hear today, uh, it's a very popular term. Uh, it's not bad in its own right because it, to be agile means to be flexible, to be nimble, to be able to quickly turn on a dime. But imagine, if you will, that the various agents and or stakeholders in this value system all have different priorities, different views of what um, the goal is, a different sense of urgency, what would happen to velocity 
if each group was being agile in its own direction. Now, we get to the challenge. Because when we live in a silo or vertical organization where the concept of plan, build, run isn't understood as a value stream, and there are no shared beliefs or processes, if you will, then what we're dealing with is an organization which is being agile, but velocity is even becoming an issue. Now, add to this a recent trend where you see additional third parties, complex value systems being made even more complex because we're introducing uh, cloud services and shadow IT is growing because of the challenges of uh, perceived around internal IT service delivery. What we're seeing is definitely not an improvement on velocity. We're seeing even greater fragmentation in the value system, even greater issues of speed and flow. This is largely because we're not looking at it from the perspective of value streams or end-to-end -end models. So how do we deal with this issue? Because various agents in the organization, in the value stream that we work with today, they have, by nature, different goals and objectives. And this is not a negative thing in itself, uh, because this is the reality of any complex system. On the plan build side, we have this world uh, focused on time is money. It's all about speed. You know, this is where the flow, and this is where um, the the agile world and the DevOps world is very focused on lean because lean is all about improving flow, right? Improving feedback loops, amplifying those feedback loops, finding more rapid ways to release into production. But at the same time, production operations has an alternative goal, which is to stabilize, to protect, to assure. Now, in a value system, remember, there are different things we have to achieve to get to the customer conversation of quality, or value, I should say. One is the fact that they do get their benefit, and they get it as quickly as possible. But they also... Troy? So need to be protected, assured. So this is not a night around the supportability or the recoverability of this service being introduced to production. Let's consider just software configuration management for a second. Without the ability and good discipline around software configuration management, around the storage of code and versioning, the ability to speed up in other areas is impaired. So it's not about just speeding up everything to this ad infinito perspective of, you know, speed is everything. We have to be careful that we're achieving both these goals. The natural tension in the system should always be balancing and evolving over time. Let's talk about this in the context of planned and unplanned work. So for the moment, consider that any organization, as I mentioned earlier, has a process architecture. And at the highest level, what we consider is that all organizations have three basic value streams. There's the concept of, of I have a requirement, I have to develop it for the organization, the customer, to its available. And once I have to go from concept to availability, right? that's the plan and build concept here. I then deliver it, that's the, the run premise, and then any service organization would then have the responsibility to support. So in this model, you could think about this in three value streams. Now I've kind of used some different terms here. But I'm gonna back up one slide here, not one slide, but one step. And let's think about these three value streams and how they typically get implemented in an organization. So first of all, again, whether you've heard service management terms before or you've been introduced to other frameworks, every organization has all of the processes we've been describing so far.
But where organizations will initially first focus their improvement efforts, their continual improvement value stream. Because this is where net new value is created. And again, they have to speed up the ability to create net new value in a world that's speeding up every day. And the business has a higher demand on speed to continue being relevant in the market. So speed to market is huge here. So what happens typically before an organization focuses on anything else, they'll typically improve their development and or project methodologies, their build processes, if you will. Now, what won't happen a lot of the time is focusing on the other things. We'll come back to that in one moment. Well, let's, for the moment, consider you as an organization have improved your project management methodology. In fact, you, you might even use the moniker or the label, we're a project family, right? Or a project organization, a project factory. There's a lot of terms that get thrown around these days. So here's the way it typically works. You get this improvement around your ability to build and release. And so each of these build and release projects, they consider them like their own little trade. Uh, they second to themselves the resources they need, the skills they need, and they become a self-contained entity. This train then is put on its own track and sent on its way towards the eventual destination, destination which is the production environment. Now I'll do that a half more half dozen more times. I'll set up another six odd trains, each of them on their own tracks, all headed towards that production destination. Now, one of the challenges is that those trains, all moving down their own tracks, are not being orchestrated together. Its own orchestration as a specific project is not the issue, but they're all moving down towards this goal of destination of production at the same well, basically at the same, in the same direction, but at different speeds. Now, imagine that you are Monday morning. Okay? Now, we know from experience that when those trains land are typically on the weekend. So the projects, the development activities, big and small, typically will happen in non-business hours, so that's going to usually happen um, on Saturday and or Sunday. Now, this causes an interesting effect. If you consider the worst day to be on the service desk in any organization is Monday. Because what happens? Those trains, which were largely unorchestrated, each of them coming into that same production environment, I'm going to switch the analogy here to a plane. These planes coming in, all hitting the same runway, are not necessarily orchestrated well. So the worst day to be on that service desk is the Monday because the calls come in, and you know how this works. Now, to put this into context, we're going to talk about this in the context of waste and lean. There are four types of work that anyone in IT does. Three of those are going to be planned. So new customer initiatives, projects, that's planned work. Foundational things that need to happen, projects or development activities around things like a, like a network or storage area network, things that must happen so the net new customer initiatives can actually happen. Changes by nature have value because they're intended to enhance or to repair. And then the fourth area of planned work is operate. Now, I said there are three, but there are actually four areas of planned work. Net new customer projects, the foundational IT initiatives, changes and operate. Simply, someone sometimes has to simply look at a screen. The reality is you came to work on Monday planning to do one of those four things. But because of the unorchestrated component, what happened was phones began to ring and you entered into the third value stream at the bottom, which is called support. Now think about your daily schedule and your weekly schedule in this context. Typically, you'll spend most of Monday in a support context. Maybe, and most probably, Tuesday. Finally, by the end of day Tuesday, you're starting to climb out of the unplanned work from the weekend. Now you're catching up on Wednesday, because you've been basically offline and out of email for that first two days, so that by Thursday, you're finally getting into the context of planned work. Now, an interesting definition, I'm going to use a layman's term here, is that lean would define value as something the customer would willingly pay for if given a choice. Now, as I talk about this with organizations, and we look at the percentage of planned versus unplanned work, 
reality is that most organizations, most individuals will tell me, and they tell me this, I don't tell them, they spend 75% of their time in unplanned work, which from a lean perspective is dubious from the point of view of value. So this is where from a value stream perspective, it's incredibly important to have these value streams linked up because in a world where you have strategy type processes, which kick off the orchestration of this project value stream, in a world where non-functional considerations are also made to be embedded within the project and the development task around supplier or security or uh, you know capacity monitoring availability support planning folks focuses only not only on the feature but also on the non-functional requirement and in a world where you orchestrate the landing of these planes in a common environment you have this world that works better <laughs> from the point of view of orchestrating the build value streams along with the service management perspective. Now, the challenge with this is that ideally we would actually have you know, some lessons learned if these value streams were linked up. Our problem is that this doesn't often happen because we don't see them as three parallel value streams that have to be synchronized and orchestrated. We find that an individual, like a developer or an architect or anyone who is not by their native role in support, typically spends most of their time in unplanned activities, largely because we haven't made this picture true. We haven't integrated the service management processes that ITIL talks about with the build processes. And even if you have adopted service management, most organizations will hit you know, the incident, the problem, the change, and then they'll stop dead often because what's happening is it's being implemented from the right ITIL or service management is being brought in through a production or infrastructure type organization. But if you think about it, where would the issues of unplanned work initiate and originate from? It would be in the plan build or strategy design. So the organizations which have never moved beyond incident problem and change will never have dealt with the sources of unplanned work. So service improvement, continual improvement, is key to focus on the entire value chain, on the entire flow from demand to deliver. This premise of flow is not a stranger to any organization. But what the perspective of flow is will be based on what you view your role in the IT organization to be. You see, everyone has process. It's just what process do they wish to pay attention to, do they think they need to pay attention to. This is a cultural model that looks at the premise of focus on flow based on a model of evolution, on service orientation. At the bottom, the technology-focused department is focused on the flow of its own process, whether that's a server build process, or it's a scrum or sprint type process, whatever my specific process is, that's what I think about from the point of view of flow and efficiency. As you move up this chain, you get an organization now focused on systems and services for the first time, but we still have this premise of that's operations and that's dev and they're very different, and we don't have common flow across them. Next level up, I begin to get this view of customer orientation, that's a business unit focused view. And now I begin to have a consideration and a belief in processes that span the entire plan, build, run organization. So now I think about flow from an IT perspective at an enterprise level. As I move up this chain, I begin to lose the delineation or separation premise between business and IT. And now I begin to worry about the flow of business process. And then finally, as I understand that IT is part of simply of an overall business ecosystem, I'm now experiencing and focused on the flow of service provisioning to outside market. You see, everyone thinks about flow, but based on your cultural premise and where you are at this moment, your focus on flow will be restricted by culture. So I'm going to move on now to another part of the session, <clears throat> which is focusing on this 
value proposition. So what Lean talks about is, of course, that customer value, which is right in the center of this diagram, is king. We're going to talk about voice of customer. But to deliver customer value, we need to understand the value stream end to end. Again, we can't think of it simply as a specific activity or even a specific process. We have to look at the whole system. Because when we see it end to end, will be the first time we can identify issues around flow, bottlenecks, and constraints. That flow that we're going to focus on now can be interrupted by all manner of things, whether they be defects, whether they be overproduction, too much variability. There are multiple ways we can analyze the impediments to flow that Lean brings to the table that focuses on waste type categories. Another premise is pull, where life's too short to work on things which are not of value to the service consumer. So we focus on a pull system of demand and we focus on improving our demand channels for intake of customer requirements to ensure that we're working on the right things in the right sequence and the right priority. Portfolio management, an example, business relationship management, figures in key here. And the perfection concept is that we can get better at all of these above, and this continues to be across the board. As I mentioned earlier, it's all about the premise of value. Now, voice of customer, and this is where we get into the agile DevOps space, focuses on what are the things that the business needs to achieve quickly and the new initiatives that we need to put in place. But we also have to balance the need of voice of business, which is, yes, we could offer you these five services, but to do so it would be redundant. It would actually have a cost, and the cost of delivery of the services perhaps is less than the revenue received. So we can't do silly things to put us out of business or in a uh, bankrupt situation. And of course, we have to understand the voice of legislation because we have to protect and assure and make sure that we're not liable as an organization. So we have all of these voices in our head that we have to ensure focuses on the right things relative to improvement. So think about this relative to improving things in general. As I mentioned earlier, lean isn't only about waste chasing. Uh, you know, we, we have this view of, and it's all about waste reduction, and, I'll, and as soon as I find something that's waste, then I, like the little boy on the left, stick my finger in the dike and I go after that one thing. And It's like a whack-a-mole game. See waste, kill it. See waste, kill it. That's not the goal here. Lean is really more about, remember, this target state we've got going on, we have to identify, here's our current state, and based on this probably very um, voluminous <laughs> opportunity for improvement, what do I improve first, second, and third? So this service improvement, this waste reduction, this flow efficiency model focuses on not just one thing at a time, but the overall strategy of problem analysis and solving. To do that, Lean focuses on a continual improvement method that's borrowed from Six Sigma. And there are various acronyms in this diagram I won't take time to describe today, but it focuses on a improvement methodology that first begins with the voice of customer. It spends a lot of time analyzing the current state to ensure that we focus on the right problems to solve, not just the immediate problem to solve and then allows us to do value stream analysis of our current state in the measure phase and identifies the incremental quick wins of the improved phase. One of the interesting things that we focus on in the lean premise is the Kaizen, is that yes, transformation has its place. Major projects of improvement have value, but the incremental small improvement steps over time has a huge improvement over on the overall system. Now, one of the key premises of Lean that's a little bit different is that using the DMAIC model, the last step in the improvement model focuses on controls. Now, a control in this context is something that we make sure we put in place to ensure that the next time we come looking for or at this improvement, it's still there. Think of it as investment insurance, whether that's establishing an owner for this value stream whether that's documenting the new standard process, 
whether that's putting measurements in place like key performance indicators. The key is, as we move through this Kaizen improvement of figuring out what we have, what's causing the issue, putting the improvements in place, we don't stop until we have established the controls to ensure that what we've done stays put and even better improves over time. It's one of the reasons I like the DMAIC model because it focuses the conversation and makes sure that we stop on the control component and not to forget that element which is critical to ongoing success. So in the last few minutes, we're going to talk about waste. Waste is a key component of lean. We've talked about that several times now, the non-value added activity, <laughs> right? We, the unplanned work. But waste comes in a couple of different flavors. Lean talks about the three M's. There's muda, and this is the most obvious. This is stuff we shouldn't be doing. That This is the report we're generating that no one is watching or, or looking at or reading anymore. It's the fact that we've over-engineered something to the point of you know, multiple features no one currently uses. All of that is true, and we're going to look at removing that. We'll talk about that on the next slide. But there's also two other key elements of waste that we need to focus on. Mura, which is variation. I often find that this is actually one of the biggest issues of waste in an IT organization, where we have multiples of everything. In fact, you know, working in the service management industry for many years, my observation around process specifically, as well as technology and services, is that very few organizations have any lack of processes. Reality is we have multiple processes for doing pretty much anything. We have multiple ways of approving changes, multiple ways of getting support, multiple ways of tracking inventory, multiple ways of pretty much anything we do. And that multiple implication has a huge cause and effect on waste and also risk and eventually flow. By the very nature that we have multiples, we basically bear the cost of you know, the resources that are being applied, the inventory caught up in the fact that we have multiples. Multiples of anything that are supposed to connect together, like multiple ways to get support, for example, will cause issue and handoffs from one group to the other. So this causes issues around flow from the point of view of handoff speed and efficiency. With high variability, you get higher risk. With higher risk, you get higher defect. We're, we are an organization rife with variability or variance, largely because we've built in our organizations and our processes based on this vertical concept of plan, build, run versus the horizontal value stream. Variance is a major issue. Standardization and consolidation of processes is actually one of the key goals of Lean. In fact, one of the key goals that I want to focus on here is that even more important than best practice would be standard practice. Because at least with standard practice, we would have the ability to improve flow. And then the last of this, the last of these three ends is called Muri. And this is the premise where Lean brings to the table that it's not about maximization, it's optimization. Any resource, any person in a value system, whether that be a person or even a machine, if you run that machine or that person hard enough and long enough and you maximize utilization, what eventually happens to that resource? They get sick, they go on, you know, Sanity leave, they, they burn out, the machine breaks down. Let alone what happens to the ability of time for continual improvement slash innovation. So when we look at utilization, maximization of that utilization is not the goal because that introduces huge waste into the system. All of this is about the fact that any given task that you do can be looked at in three components. One, this is value-added work. This is work that we do that actually delivers a direct result to the goal. I have a project being delivered. I have a software development activity being completed. I have a service restored. This is value-added work. There is, though, work that must happen to ensure that the value-added work sticks, stays in place, and improves over time. Call this continual improvement. Call this administration. This is stuff that we must do because it's necessary. But here's the thing. If we do too much of this, we also cause issue in flow. 
So it's not about having a three ring binder for every process. It's not about climbing up the maturity level to level five at everything you do in IT. Some processes may only need a half sheet of paper with a checklist. Other processes may need that three ring binder. But the key is we focus on minimizing the necessary but non-value add. And then finally, there's the stuff we shouldn't be doing at all. Uh, there's the willing this to solve the same incidents over and over and over again without ever asking why. Uh, there's the, the fact that we are rife with redundant systems and processes. This is the stuff that has to be eliminated with extreme prejudice. Now put this in context, right? All of these potential waste areas can kill flow. When we have incidents, the service is being disrupted. Uh, we have people being caught up in support processes for unplanned work where they should be probably spending at least more of their time in planned work. Because we're never going to say that any support organization shouldn't have support. That's actually one of the three core value streams. But you have to ask yourself how much time or percentage of your available capacity is being spent in unplanned work. If you're like many organizations that we work with, you're talking about 75% of your current resource capacity in unplanned work, stuff that customer wouldn't willingly pay for if they were given a choice. So we have to remove and reduce this from the point of view of removing defects. These are killers to flow. The fact that we have forms come down the line that are not filled out completely, or we have knowledge not transferred from development to operations on known defects causes real work, killers of flow. Variation, we've already talked about, inflexibility, uh, you know, idle talks about release, but if we only have four quarterly release time frames, that's hugely inflexible. It doesn't give me enough flexibility relative to improving flow. Overproduction, that's where we produce, we buy more than needed, but one of the key components to flow that we don't focus on is weight. Now, one of the things about value stream analysis is that when we do process definition, we typically focus first upon what's the goal of the, of the process. You know, that's what's the voice of customer. That's great. We then move from voice of customer to identifying the process model, the workflow. And you've seen these uh, probably developed hundreds in your lifetime. This is the, the swim lane diagram, the process flow with the racy. And it tells us what steps should happen in the process and what happens next and who doesn't. That's all goodness. But the next step is to put that process flow into a value stream map that looks at it from a timing perspective. So what is the time expected for each activity? What, even more importantly, is the wait time between steps? Because again, as we mentioned earlier, when we focus on flow, we're going to be looking at new metrics like cycle time, which is the end-to-end -end completion of that value stream, or lead time, which is the point of the customer engagement to receipt. Because what you're going to find is that when you do a value stream analysis on time and flow in waste, is that most of the time spent in the actual completion of the process is not in value added activities at all. It's in the wait step between steps, the wait state between steps. You wouldn't understand that until you look at this process through a lean lens. So all of these things are potentially going to impede our ability to deliver the just-in-time premise of speed and flow. So as we wrap up here, we're at the top of the hour. You know, you, I've been giving you several examples as we go along, but one of the first things that I have to help organizations understand is that IT is a good candidate for lean. If you think about it from the premise of the different types of weight and waste categories we've been discussing so far, we are rife with waste pretty much everywhere you look, whether that's variability of process and or tools and or functions. We have waste pretty much everywhere you look. I mean, I've gone to places um, literally, no, albeit larger organizations, where the support model is so messed up, they had to create a service desk to call when they didn't know what service desk to call. Or I've been in other organizations where they buy the same exact tool from the same vendor simply because one group wouldn't give the other group access to it. It gets that silly. 
So the challenge when we don't look at waste, we don't look at efficiency, we don't look at flow, is that we are going to be impeded because we can't scale. We have to be able to look at any process through the lens of a lean model. So because I believe so passionately, and because Pink Elephant is so uh, focused on this value premise, we've become part of this Lean IT Association because of our belief in the Lean model. Think of it this way. You're developing a process. You have to look at the best way to do that process, and ITIL and other frameworks will give you good information as a reference model. But you have to look at that reference model through the lean lens. Okay, Slip it with the lens in front of your, your eyes as you read the various books of whatever framework we're discussing. The framework that you're using, whether it's a software development or an IT service management framework, we'll talk about the best way. You need to then put the other lens in front of that at the best level and at the best speed. Because of this, this organization, Lean IT Association, has developed a body of knowledge, is in the process of building a certification. And you can actually take professional certification and designations as you learn about how to apply Lean in an IT management environment. Uh, the course, the Lean IT Foundation, is in existence now. It's been out for already over a year. This fall, we're seeing the launch of the leadership course and also the Kaizen Lead course. And next year, we'll see the Lean IT Coach. So these are professional certifications, and in the case of the Kaizen Lead and the Coach, personal designations. It's a very exciting time to be in IT focused on Lean. So closing out our session, if you want more information, then uh, I have a blog where I talk a lot about Lean and various Lean elements. And you'll find that the link is right there. There's various podcasts. I have a radio show called Practitioner Radio. Uh, as well as I would highly encourage people on the webinar today, seriously consider taking the Lean IT Foundation course to begin your journey around how to apply Lean to an IT management world in philosophy. So with that, Deborah, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Well, thank you for this, Troy. I truly appreciate uh, this presentation, and I myself learned quite a bit uh, uh, from you in this session today. And I do hope that our audience also uh, had an opportunity to um, uh, learn. And if there are any questions that you might have, uh, you can. We have a couple of minutes. Uh, if you would like to send us a chat through with a question, we'll try to get to that. And if not, uh, feel free to uh, send an email to myself and I'll show you my contact details in a minute. Uh, and we will make sure that we get that back to you. But um, again, I'd just like to thank everyone. I'm just taking a moment to see if any questions are coming through at this point. And uh, it looks um, Okay, the question was, was this recorded? And the answer is yes. Uh, we will be sending you uh, a copy of the presentation as well as the recording uh, in the next day or so. We just need to present it. And I'm getting some very nice comments that are coming through. Thank you so much uh, for the, the nice words about the about this session. So again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you have questions, uh, this is how you can reach Troy. Uh, many of you know me. You can reach out to me directly. Uh, we're going to continue to be doing these type of executive sessions and I'll be sending you emails, uh, making you aware of them because we hope that they're providing you the value uh, to have a really deep understanding of Lean, Lean IT, and also the mission of LITA. So thank you all so much for joining us today. Troy, thank you so much for a really excellent presentation. It was greatly appreciated. And if you have any questions, everybody, and you, and, and you can think about them later, just reach out to us. So with that, I'm going to close this webinar, and thank you all again. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Troy. <laughs>